Okay, so this past summer, I went to I went on a trip to Korea, and um, I I needed a passport, but I didn't have one. And um, it took I looked it up, and it said that it took about um, six weeks for it to arrive, and I was leaving in less than two weeks. So um, I had to go to the federal building in LA and pay around 200 or a little over for a passport to get made in one day. And um, so today I'll be talking to you about um, how to apply for a passport for the first time. Uh, okay, um, I've done extensive research on this topic because I was um, getting a passport made in last summer. Okay, so um, with spring break coming up in summer, I'm sure a lot of you guys plan on going trips out of the country. So um, I'll show you how you can apply for a passport without having to pay the penalty fee of the $200 that I had to pay. Um, okay, uh, I'll discuss what application must be filled out and what proper items that you'll need in order for you to get a passport and the fees that you need to pay for a passport. So the first thing um, I would like you to know is the step in applying for a passport, which is um, filling out the DS-11 form. It sounds confusing, but it's not. And then, um, okay, so uh, I got this information from travel.state.gov, and um, okay, so this is okay, this is the um, DS-11 form for your passport, and so basically you just fill out all your information, and um, in this you have to provide your social security number, and um, there's a push and stuff. This is just stuff that you need to remember, not like to do, and um, this section you. You can't sign until after meeting with um, a passport agency person. Yeah. Okay. And um, oh, okay. Now that um, I informed you about the documentation that will be needed to um, make a passport, <laughs> um, I will let you know about um, the <laughs> documentation that you need in order for you to um, fill out your passport. Okay, so um, in order to apply for a passport, you need uh, a form of evidence that you are a U.S. citizen. And um, all of these are acceptable as sources of U.S. citizens, of showing that you're a U.S. citizen, um, such as a birth certificate, a certificate of citizenship, and a naturalization certificate. And um, when you apply for a passport, an ID must also be shown, and this can be a driver's license, a natural naturalization certificate, a government ID, or a current military ID. And um, another thing that must be needed when you apply for a passport is um, two photos, and they must be identical and two by two um, in color, and they must have been taken in the last six months and um, be taken behind a white background. And then this is like, this is uh, an example of what it should look like. So it's two by two and the head it must be the headshot. And then, okay. okay. So now that you know the items that are needed for making a passport, I'll discuss the last step, which is um, the fees that are required to make a passport. Uh, okay, as claimed by USPS.com, passport fees are um, vary according to age. So um, a pass, so I'll let you know about the passport book. Okay, so um, it's, if you're 16 and older, it'll cost $100 for a passport, and if you're 16 and under, it'll be 85 Okay, so um, today I talked to you about what form must be filled out, which is the DS-11 form, and um, the, the proper items that must be needed in order for you to, in order for you to fill out the application and <laughs> and how much it will cost. Okay. So um, next time you're planning to go on a trip, <laughs> okay, to go on a trip, plan ahead and make a passport on instead of procrastinating like I did.
sounded like uh, I, it sounded like your goal is how to avoid some of the problems that you ran into and we didn't really get an explanation about why the last minute uh, issue is such a big deal and what the timeline is or what the lead up time is so I felt like that part of the speech that was the main initiating point didn't really get fulfilled very well but the other basics were okay you described the basic issue uh, you're describing you're going through the process it's organized pretty clearly the visual is fine um, on uh, presentation issues the visual factors uh, you've got your legs crossed at the ankles and you're constantly going up on your toes and so you you look a little off-center most of the time when you're speaking and that's awkward uh, gestures you have some good indicators um, facial expressions uh, you meet our expectations but sometimes you're not really engaging the audience very much and at the end of course you kind of break character in a couple of spots you do the same thing with your voice you just kind of lose control in the last couple of minutes of the speech and I think that's a little problematic you're more script dependent than you want to be uh, the amount of detail that you have here is not so much that I think you really need to have more than a couple of uh, words on an outline to get through the things that you're talking about um, at the end you do get a little panic stricken in your voice uh, and I think that, that that's awkward the pacing is problematic because you do have some odd pauses and some vocalized pauses during the presentations uh, you've got a structure and you have transitions I, you're a little mechanical in those sorts of things and that's something you're, you're sort of at the level of awkwardness instead of skillfulness when you're doing this as you do it more and more often I think you'll feel a little bit less obvious about doing those things but you're still kind of at that obvious stage you know now that I'm done with this let me move to the next point it just seems mechanical as you're going through those points well did that mean that we've heard everybody